Hi everyone, welcome to this video lecture. My name is Ani Bulai. In this video, we will talk about the binary search algorithm. First, let's discuss what search algorithms are. In computer science, a search algorithm is an algorithm for finding an item with specified properties among a collection of items. The items may be stored individually as records in a database, or maybe as elements of a search space. There are many search algorithms. In this video, we will talk about binary search algorithms. The binary search algorithm belongs to the divide and the conquer strategy. And the binary search algorithm is an efficient algorithm to search the position of an element. The algorithm can only be applied to a sorted list. And a sorted list means that the elements in the list are arranged either in an increasing order or in a decreasing order. Now let's see how the binary search algorithm works. The binary search algorithm starts by comparing a so-called search key K with the meta element A of M of the list. If they match, the algorithm stops. If the search key K is greater than the middle element A of M, then the first half of the list can be eliminated and the algorithm will continue with the same operation recursively for the second half of the list. If the search key k is less than the middle element, then the second half of the list can be eliminated, and the algorithm will continue with the same operation recursively for the first half of the list. The binary search algorithm reduces the number of elements needed to be checked by a factor of 2 each time and it finds the sort value if it exists in the list or if not it determines not present in a logarithmic time. To see the binary search algorithm in action we illustrate this with an example. Consider the following sorted list. Let's call the list list A and the numbers below the list are the index numbers which give the position of the values in the list. Note that we start counting at zero for the positions as this is common in the computer science for lists and arrays. Now suppose we want to search number 13 in the list. So our search key is 13. For the sake of simplicity, we will do a so-called three-way comparison. This assumes that after one comparison of the search key k with the middle element a of m, the algorithm can determine whether k is smaller, equal to, or greater than the middle element a of m. To compare the search key k with the middle element a of m, we should determine the position of the middle element. For that, we introduce two variables. A variable L for the left boundary and a variable R for the right boundary. The variable L points to the first element. The value of the variable L is at position zero. The variable R points to the last element, which is 7 in our example, or n minus 1, as we have n elements in the list. So in this example, n is 8, so n minus 1 is 7. Now we are looking for the middle element in the list from where we are going to divide the list into two halves. The middle element is found by taking the left and the right variables and dividing that by 2 and taking the floor value of the result. The floor is given by these signs. So in this case, 
L is 0 and R is 7. So M, the middle of the list, is then at index number 3. Because 0 plus 7 divided by 2 is 3.5 and, and the floor of 3.5 is 3. So our middle element is at index number 3. Now we can have three cases. First, 13 can be equal to the element at position M. Second, is 13 less than the element at position M? And the third one is, is 13 greater than the element at position M? Now, let's check the first case. The first case is, is 13 equal to the element at position M? M is, in this case, 3. So the element at position 3 is 16. So 13 is not equal to 16. Now, let's look now at the second case. The second case is, is 13 less than the element at position M? But in our example, it is. So 13 is less than 16. Now we can say that 13 is in the left half of the list. But how can we be sure that 13 is in the left half of the list? Well, we can say that because the list is sorted. The element at the left side of the middle element are less than the middle element. So 13 must be present at the left side of the middle element. So now we can eliminate the right half of the list. Now, let's consider the left half. So, the variable L points at 0, and the variable R points to position 2. That is at position M minus 1. So, the middle element will be at position 1, because 0 plus 2 divided by 2, and the floor of the result is 1. And now the whole cycle is repeated recursively. For this iteration, we again have three cases. The first one is, is 13 equal to the element at position M? The second case is, is 13 less than the element at position M? And the third one is, is 13 greater than the element at position M? Now, let's check the first case. Is 13 equal to the element at position M? M is in this case at position 1, and the element at position 1 is 7. So, 13 is not equal to 7. Now, let's look at the second case. <clears throat> in the second case, we have, is 13 less than the element at position M. Well, that is not, 13 is not less than 7. Now we can say that 13 is on the right side of the metal element. So we can eliminate the left half of the list. Now we will consider the right side of the metal element. So the variable L will point at position 2. That is at position M plus 1. Variable R will also point at position 2. When the left and the right variables point to the same index number, it means we only have one element in the list. The middle element will then be at position 2, because 2 plus 2 divided by 2 and the floor of the result is 2. So the whole cycle is recursively repeated again. In this iteration, we check whether 13 is equal to the element at position M. Well, it is. 13 is equal to the element at position M. So now we found the search key. 13 is equal to 13 and this is our stop condition. 
So the algorithm returns the position of the element, which is two in this example, and the algorithm stops here. Now let's consider the case in which the search key is not present in the list. Let's say we search for number 24. So our search key now is 24, and 24 is not in the list. The middle element in this example is found as follows. The left boundary L is at the index number 0, and the right boundary R is at the index number 7. So the middle of the list is at index number 3. Now let's look at the cases. Is 24 equal to the element at position M? Well, the element at the middle position is 16. So 24 is not equal to 16. Now let's look at the second case. The second case is, is 24 less than the element at position M? No, it is not. 24 is greater than 16. So now we can eliminate the left half of the list. Now we will consider the right half. The left boundary will move to position 4. That is M plus 1. And the right boundary stays at index number 7. So the middle element is at position 5. That is 4 plus 7 is 11, and 11 divided by 2 is 5.5, and the floor of 5.5 is 5. So the middle element is now at index number 5. And now the whole cycle is repeated recursively. Now let's look at the cases. Is 24 equal to the element at position M? The element at the middle position is now 30. So 24 is not equal to 30. Now let's look at the second case. Is 24 less than the element at position M? Yes, it is. 24 is less than 30. So now we can eliminate the right half of the list. Now the left boundary remains at position 4. The right boundary moves to index number 4. That is M minus 1. So the middle element is at position 4. And now the whole cycle is repeated recursively. Is 24 equal to the element at position M? The element at the middle position is now 23. So 24 is not equal to 23. Now let's look at the second case. Is 24 less than the element at position M? No, it is not. 24 is greater than 23. So 24 is on the right side of M. That means that the variable L will move to the right side of M. L is M plus 1. So the variable L will be 5 and R will remain as it is. So this will be our stop condition. The stop condition is there where the variable L is greater than the variable R. If the variable L is greater than the variable R, so if variable L crosses the variable R, it means that the search key is not present in the list. So here is a pseudocode of the binary search algorithm. First, set a left boundary L to the first element and a right boundary R to the last element. Then, if the left boundary L is greater than the right boundary R, then the search key is not found and the algorithm stops. In the third step, we set the position of the middle element M to the floor of L plus R divided by 2. Then, if the search key is equal to the element at the middle position M, then we return the search key and we stop. In the fifth step, 
if the search key is less than the element at the middle position m, then we set r to m minus 1 and we return to step 2. In the sixth step, we check whether the search key is greater than the element at the middle position m. If it is, then we set l to m plus 1 and we go back to step 2. Now let's write the Python code for the binary search algorithm. Here we will show you the iterative method for the binary search. First, we start to define a function in line 4. We call the function binary search and pass two parameters to the function. My list for the list or array and key for the search key. In line 5, we set the variable L for the left boundary at index number 0. That is the position of the first element in the list. In line 6, we set the variable R for the right boundary. This is the position of the last element in the list. And remember that the position is found by subtracting 1 from the total number of elements in the list as we start from 0 for the index numbers. In line 9, we calculate the middle of the list and we take the floor of the result. To use the floor function, we must import the mark module in line 2. So in line 11, we check the search key with the value of the element at the middle position. If the search key is equal to the value at the middle position, then we return the position of the middle element. In line 14, we check whether the search key is less than the middle element. If it is less than the middle element, then the variable r becomes m minus 1. This means that the search key is not on the right side of the middle element. Or else, the variable l becomes m plus 1. This means that the search key is on the right side of the middle element. The lines 9 to 18 are repeated until the variable L crosses the variable R. This is the stop condition and we return minus 1 to indicate that the element is not in the list. So this is the Python code for the binary search. A line 22 and 23, we give an example to test the code. And in line 26 to 31, we call the function and we print the result. Here we have the recursive method for binary search in Python. The code is very similar to the iterative code, but the difference is that we use recursion in this code. So if you look at the time complexity of the binary search, we see that for the best case, the algorithm needs only one comparison to search the key element in the list with n elements. In the best case, the search key k is the middle element. So the time complexity in the best case is the big O of one. The binary search belongs to the divide and the conquer technique. This means that the list is repeatedly divided into two parts. If an algorithm shows this behavior, then the time complexity in the worst case will be of log n. And the time complexity in the average case is also the big O of log n. In this video, we have discussed the binary search algorithm. We have seen how this algorithm works and we showed you Python code for the binary search algorithm. And finally, we discussed the time complexity of the binary search algorithm. Well, that's it for now, and thank you for watching. See you in the next videos.